Here's a great idea for your next outing. A cruise of the L.A. Harbor on a Spirit Cruises yacht. Spirit Cruises offers everything you need to relax and enjoy your time on the water. For more information, call 310-548-8080 or visit spiritmarine.com. Oh, boy. Do you have a tattoo? Are you inked? Are your kids inked? Great. Then you're going to love our next guest. Joining us in the studio is a woman who has a gift. Her drawings are edgy. They're surreal. They're playful. And uh, at the same time, uh, did I say they're edgy? And, and some of them, they, they, you can even say they're lowbrow. In fact, that's what she says on her website. Uh, perfect for tattoos, right? Uh, she's the author of the book, Mommy, Where Do Tattoos Come From? What a great concept. <laughs> Say hello to Skinderella. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me on. I'm now, so excited. Yes, we're all excited that you're here. Now, that's not your real name. That's not your given name, is it? It's on my birth certificate. No. Just Get kidding. out of here. No, oh. no. My real name's Aaron. Yes? Yeah. What, like E-R-I-N? Well... Um, it was Aaron like that when I was born. And then when I was in about sixth grade, I decided that I needed to be different. And so I rode my bike to the Social Security office, like when you could actually still do that. And um, I changed it to A-I-R-Y-N. In the sixth grade? Sixth grade, yeah. You're a problem child. Well, kind of. Don't you have to have? <laughs> don't you have to have an adult approve changes like that? Not in the not in the eighties, the early eighties. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, you know. I what? took my school ID and I said I want to change my name. No, that's like when I got my driver's license in nineteen seventy five on my sixteenth birthday. I drove myself to the DMV. Yeah. <laughs> and and they said, okay, let's take the driving test. You're supposed to have an adult there with you. I don't know, but I got I went by myself. I got my driver's license. So like the seventies and eighties, it's like yeah, okay, things well, were way different. Whatever, we trust you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sixth grade. I wasn't covered in tattoos then, so it was probably easier. <laughs> well, yeah. Let me let me describe you for the for uh, uh, folks who are uh, not watching live. Oh, by the way, you can do that if you want to watch right now. If you are listening live, go to the How to Listen page at philhewlettandfriends dot com. We have a camera trained on you right now. Yeah, and, I told everyone to so, log on. Yeah. So uh, let's see your 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 right arm. You got one on the shoulder. You've got uh-huh. the, and they're very colorful. They're not just the basic yeah. green yes, tattoo. This color. is the, one of my favorite. Dave Policios did this for me of my dog Foxy that passed away way last year oh. so yeah that's my that's you, my favorite piece you can't tattoo yourself uh, i really. can oh you can yeah have you yeah. Let's see. i'm working on this oh. leg i this was working on, on the this calf on the right I leg got pregnant and oh. uh oh. goes a little oh. further their up, legs but... she's showing us her leg yeah. and there's all kinds of tattoos there what is that was that a <laughs> like would, a, a caterpillar or uh, it was a grasshopper a grasshopper i don't know and then your 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 left arm from mm-hmm. the shoulder down to your wrist what do you call that a sleeve yeah that's a sleeve yep yeah, that's a sleeve. If I'm I've ever seen one, not c- missing any parts. Colors yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Well, they're they're striking. They really are. Now, at, at your website, SkinderellaArt.com, mm-hmm. your how do you describe your artwork? It's like uh, um, it's like evil Betty Boop. Kind of. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a really good <laughs> definition of it. <laughs> I just kind of call it like cartoon pinup, like. It's kind of a different style. I was calling it tattoon art for yeah. a while. Uh-huh. Tattoon. Um, yeah, because it's like cartoons and, and mixed with tattoos. And yeah. I don't know. It's just like a, a hodgepodge of I see something that looks cool and I go home and draw it. Like if I see a color yeah. that looks cool, I'm like, I'm going to do a whole painting around that color. So there's really. But I you mean, really have a talent for the artwork. And I'm looking at the tattoos that you do. And I, I was thinking, how can you tattoo those those pinup uh, things? There, there is one in your examples of the tattoos, but then I'm looking at some of the work. I can, I can tell you that the eyeball that you have here, I don't know if that's somebody's arm or leg. Yeah, that's on her dad's arm. Uh, on yeah. Her, her who? On her dad's arm. Yeah, your, my daughter, your daughter Keely. Yeah. Your daughter's here. Hi, she's, Keely. She's yeah. in the green room listening. <laughs> yeah. Um, that is... Adorable kid, by the way. <laughs> I mean, the detail on that and then the little reflection that you get from the light on the eye is Yeah, just, that's uh, kind of my specialty. If you can, if you probably notice in a lot of the paintings and stuff I do, it's, um, it's all about the eye shine. Yeah, <laughs> that is something else. Which is some of the most difficult art to perform, too. Like, create recreating an eye is very difficult. It is, mm-hmm. it is. I've spent hours and hours. Now, and here's hours a question I think a lot of people have about tattoo artists. Uh, mm-hmm. And you do, uh, you have people come to your, your studio. It's in, uh, uh, ran, uh, where is it? San Juan Capistrano. San Clemente, yeah. San Clemente, Clemente Ink Gallery, San Clemente. Uh-huh. Uh, right, and you can find out about that at the website, at mm-hmm. your website. We're, we're, we're linking to it as well yeah. uh, on our links page. But, uh, all right, here's the question. Weirdest, uh, o- most awkward place you've had to tattoo somebody on their body? Butt cheek. 
Butt All cheek. Right. Butt cheek on a guy's butt cheek, a happy face. <laughs> yeah. It was miserable. Like right right the, just big hairy the, the, man ass right yeah. there in your face while you're <laughs> You know, it's like cuz the, the skin is so callous yeah. on men, you know, mm. men have tough skin to begin mm. with, yeah. but on the butt cheek, I mean it's just it's the skin's impossible to stretch, you know, when you're tattooing, you've got to And it just stretch m- the moves skin around and No, and, it's just tough and you're on a butt cheek and it's uncomfortable and there's and Sometimes are, are, are we, my, and yeah. there's crack. And, yeah, I don't uh, like it. I and, don't like and, it at all. And, that was the first and, and last. So, one what I did. degree was he, was he tidy down there? I mean, had he <laughs> had he washed up prior to? It was okay. To, yeah, I don't yeah? remember a stench. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was all right. <laughs> there was no uh, gas. Involved. And are we talking like uh, Forrest Gump? Have a nice day, type yeah, of happy ex- face. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, just a bright yellow happy face. Oh. Yeah, I, he lost a bet. I guess oh, so. Oh, okay. yeah. what that was. Fair enough. Yeah. You got to pay up. You lose yeah. a bet, you got to pay. He yeah. didn't wake up one day and say, uh, No, his. I'd like a happy face on my butt cheek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, lost a bet and his friend came and paid for it. And now, it are a lot of the people showing up and they're clear of thought and mind about what it is they want to have, or are they, uh, no. are they a little drunk and they thought, yeah. oh, Let's, let's the... get a picture on Sometimes my... they're sober and they don't know what they want. Sometimes it's a real uh, addicting feeling for a lot of different reasons, I think. But do you find that a lot of people who get tattoos, it's just a bad decision at that moment in time? No. No. And, and you're I... party to that bad decision, aren't you? I... <laughs> Well, you see, no. she doesn't feel like it's a bad no, decision. No, no. You want to go there, Phil? Let's go there. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's no. Like... I, I think it's it's very it's a very personal thing for but people. But it's there forever, and it's, you're an it accessory is there to forever. that. Forever, and um, some of it's really good. Some, I can tell when somebody's making a bad decision, and they just come in and they want something stupid on their face. I'm not going to tattoo their face. I'm not going to do something that's going to haunt yeah. them forever. Right. But if somebody comes in and says, "My dad passed away." And I want to do a memorial piece on my arm. And here's a picture who of I, my dad. Who am I going to stand in the way of that? I mean, yeah. of course you want that to be there forever. You right. Know, this so, is... so they give you a picture of dad, and then you you stencil that, or what do you do? You turn it into Yeah, a... you turn it into the work of art that they're happy with. I draw everything out beforehand, and, mm-hmm. you know, does this fit? I don't do, a, like, photorealism. I'm more of a cartoony style. Yeah. So I would do something like this. Like, this is for my daughter. Well, we're um, lo- like this. St- your, your, stuff your like arm... that. It's a, it's a diamond with a uh, gemstone with a banner across and a flower that has her name in it. Yeah. And a lot so, of color, a lot of deep Yeah, a lot of colors. color, really bright. And of mm-hmm. course, you know, if, if somebody loses a loved one, they would want to look at that every day forever. So yeah, there's, you know, there's always that kid that comes in and I tried, honestly, I try to avoid that. Yeah. You know, I she's not getting a tattoo until she's like 30. <laughs> you have a you creative know? muscle that uh, most people dream about having. It, it, did that ever get you into trouble? In your lifetime, I mean, you weren't always a tattoo artist, but you were always uh, you 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 always you, were you a doodler? Yeah, I was a doodler, like all through school. You'd have to be to through. be able to draw at the level that she's. Yeah. So while the other students are taking yeah, notes, I didn't you're get drawing very cartoons. Very good grades. I was. I would cover my whole notebook with like, uh, I don't know, bubbles or something or hearts. Like everything would just get bigger, and then my whole notebook would be covered in something, and then the teacher would say. Miss Simpson, what's the answer? And I, what? Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but then you, yeah. you did, you know, later in life after you got out of high school, you, you got involved in, in lots of things. You didn't walk out the door with your high school diploma, whether you got it or not, and open up a tattoo parlor. No, no, I didn't. I, I went a different path. I was a paralegal for a while. Um, I was in the car business for a while. Car I business? Kinda, yeah. What, yeah, like selling cars? Yeah, I sold cars. 25 years old was selling cars. Were you successful at it? Were you yeah. good? Yeah, I, it was tiring. Yeah. It was, it was right. It's yeah, tough it was to sell. Much. Sit there and haggle people all yeah. day long. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So. And, and, and you had a, a thing for. Uh, I, that sounds kinky. You had a thing for dogs. No, but you. Yes. You, you, you made a thing for dogs. I did. I did. I made the Yippie Stick. Um, it was been about maybe ten years now. What's the yippy stick? The yippy stick was like an individual it's a stick you can hit your dog with when it's getting yippy. <laughs> no, it's not. I invented one of those years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. I used to travel with my dog a lot, and nobody had like a slim jim for dogs at Seven Eleven, so I would always give the slim jim to him. Yeah. So I invented a, a dog friendly one, like less sodium and all that stuff that dogs don't eat. Yeah. So yeah, it was just an individually wrapped beef stick, and they sold it at Seven Eleven all over the country. You know what? A lot of what we've been talking about is just kind of a preamble to what I really wanted to talk to you about. And yeah. and this segment of the show is, is over now, and we're going to take a little break. But okay. I wonder, do you, have, do you uh, could you stick around for a little yeah. while longer? Yeah. Because I have a few things I want to ask you. And okay, plus, yeah. you have this book. We I'm happy even, to stay. We yeah. haven't even talked about the book. Yeah. Mommy, 
Where do tattoos come from? That's in the store at philhewlettandfriends.com. And Skinderella is going to stick around with us. And Manny the Movie Guy is in our second hour as well. <laughs> so we hope you stick around and listen some more to Phil Hewlett and Friends. Enjoy the music, will you? Thank you. <laughs> Listening to Phil Hewlett and Friends. This is hour two of the talk show where you get nothing but fun, informative, sometimes unexpected conversation about the stories you care about. You'll hear from the experts, authors, and others, and we hope to put a little smile on your face along the way. Some of the stories we have for you this hour there's a recall that you need to know about because if you eat this food, you will, after you swallow the food, be spitting up blood. No, literally, you will if you eat it, right? Am I right? You are right, Phil. Absolutely. That Plus, potential's there anyway. Manny the movie guy joins us uh, in about 15 minutes or so, and he's got uh, something to say about Cloverfield, 10 Cloverfield Lane and uh, the new Sasha Baron Cohen movie, and then those two aren't even his picks of the weeks. You won't believe what movie. I haven't even heard of the mu- movie that he's picked for the week, but he's always right. Yeah. And I Netflix and I look at him like three years later and he's and I remember Manny the movie guy told me to read that. He nails it. This that. guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah, and a whole lot more. In fact, let's get uh, things rolling because uh, staying with us from the first hour is Skinderella. She's a tattoo artist and she has a story, uh, a pretty remarkable story about how she got to where she is today and uh, with uh, uh, a fairly successful book for children. It's called Mommy, Where Do Tattoos Come From? And uh, and Skinderella, Erin is her name. But uh, I, I, I could, we're gonna turn on your mic. Press that uh, okay. that uh, that red button there. There we go. Hi, I'm on. Hi. What do you get called more, Skinderella or Erin? Erin or Ella? Yeah. yeah, I think people are Ella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think people probably feel weird. <laughs> Hi, Skinderella. Right. You know? Yeah. Depends you know, if they're my friends or if they're. Clients. You know, well, before we get into your your story and into the book, I want to ask you. It seems like tattoos have become so mainstream. It's kind of like uh, you know, guy uh, suits, guys in suits buying Harleys. Yeah. And like it yeah. Took, took the edge off of buying a Harley, like right. the, the rebellion kind of thing. Now, er- right. everybody and his mom is getting a tattoo, <laughs> and so the rebellion isn't there anymore. Do you feel right. that a little bit? I. T- I couldn't agree more, honestly. I, I think there's still a lot of um, rebels that have tattoos. Yeah. And then there's people that think getting tattoos will make them a rebel mm-hmm. or make them cool. You know, yeah. they think, oh, I'm going to be cool because tattoos are cool. No, like the people are cool. Yeah. You could have tattoos, but you're still a douche. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. so. Um, or a bro. Or a bro, mm-hmm. or a bro ho, I guess they call them. I don't, I don't sure. know. I don't know. So there's, there's still a really cool subculture that has a lot of meaning behind their tattoos. And then there's the guy that that takes his affliction shirt to the tattoo artist and says, "Yeah, put this on my chest." Oh yeah, you know. Right. So uh, yeah, there's still a divide in that subculture. I like to be on the more, you know punk rock rock and roll side of the yeah, culture yeah you know the punk bands and it, that it, scene you know you said in the first hour that you would not put a, a something stupid you wouldn't put a tattoo on somebody's face what if somebody came up and they they were total like uh, uh, uh white supremacist kkk racists and they, <laughs> wanted, they and they wanted to have a nice swastika <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Maybe I, a burning cross, those, something like those that. Those guys get tattoos. They, they do. They, they go to a specialty you, racist tattoo artist, they, don't they? Yeah, they don't come to little old me at, at the ink gallery. <laughs> yeah. Can, I, have can a little, I get a swastika, please? Can yeah, I have no, like I a little cartoon uh, Betty Boop uh, with a swastika? <laughs> saluting sign. Hitler. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I, I don't do those tattoos. You don't. There, there's certain people that do those. Well, I'm not one you. of them. Now, Chris has a tattoo <laughs> like that. You have a little swastika oh, you on, do. Your, on your ankle, don't you? I do. No, I I, I actually I do have a tattoo, but I'm concerned that my tattoo is probably like that. Uh, you know, it's definitely not part of the punk subculture. Oh, that, that, I, yeah. I might be like a '90s. Uh, you have a little butterfly, bro, dude. Under, uh, no, no. See, that didn't exist in the '90s. If you got tattooed in the '90s, it was because you did want to be different. It's no, what, not because yeah. you wanted What's to be your ta- cool. It was actually early 2000s. I'm going to yeah. tell you a quick story about yeah. it, just so we're all on the same page. Okay. Yeah. I got my last name tattooed across my upper back, which now seems sort of uh, what? Don't you see that a lot? Yeah, it's, right. It's, it's, it's normal. pretty common. Yeah, not a big deal. So I did it because I'm my last name's Martin, and I am actually the last born male that can carry on my family's last name. See, that's all, a good reason. All my other 
uh, siblings and cousins are all females. And so if you don't procreate, you'll take that name to the grave. It, it, the yeah. name either continues to live or dies with me. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is I created the artwork for it because I like to doodle around myself. Okay. And I feel like now I did sort of that tribal spray fire thing. Okay. Oh, oh okay. And you know what? Uh, you need to show this <laughs> to skin to I'm going to show it to you, Aaron. And I want you okay. to tell me because my, my thought now is maybe I could do something to it to modernize it. Or, okay. hey, maybe I leave it the same. Okay. I don't know. And it's, it's, on your back. it's on my back. So you I'm going to take headphones the headphones off. off. Yeah. Because, all right, Chris is about okay. to go shirtless. All right. Go. <laughs> the last time you did this, on the show, you poured a bucket of right. water over your head. Ah, okay. So okay. take a look. We'll turn that. Got we some good, uh, do we have very, that on the camera? Yeah, uh, we do. Okay. Very nineteen. Turn a little to, to clockwise tribal. a little bit. There you go. Right about there. All right. Look and so, that. what tribe are you from? Yeah, I'm Navajo. <laughs> no, okay, got it. Got yeah. it. <laughs> no. So, and I got that. In, I got that in early 2000s, and it's yeah. sort of 90s looking, right? Mm. Yeah. But at the time, that's what I, I thought was, was cool. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. still popular. So now, now my question is, can you do something with that to sort of modernize it, maybe take a little bit of that 90s uh, bro douche out of it? Or <laughs> <laughs> or am I doomed to have that You could, look forever? Um, uh, they sell these little, like, portable blow torches yeah. at Home uh -huh. Depot. Okay. And I bet that would work. Right. Oh. So <laughs> you're saying just completely disfigure my entire no, backside. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, you know what? The the, the, igment, the igment, the pigment in the ink these days is really good, and you could probably do just about anything over it if you wanted yeah. to. Good to know. Yeah. All right, okay. enough about you, All Chris. Right. Let's yeah. find I'm going to take one of your cards with me, though. Let's find out Aaron, about Aaron. You. Okay, now, you, you went uh, through life, and at some yeah. point, uh, you, you know... Uh, uh, well, uh, let me put it uh, mildly. You uh, came upon some interesting times. Yeah. Uh, Life-changing times. Yeah. And uh, you don't talk about it a whole lot. but uh, no. But it, it, it uh, speaks a lot to who you are today and, mm -hmm. and how you overcame all of this and continue to tr attempt to overcome yes, it on an yeah. ongoing basis, right? Yeah. Are you okay talking about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm now, five years ago, no. <laughs> yeah? But, um, yeah, I basically uh, made eye contact with the wrong individual at one point in my life, and it turned into a really uh, violent and ugly situation pretty fast, and I was stuck um, basically in a hostage situation for about a year and a half. A year and a half. So yeah, I was I was missing. Like there was a missing persons report out. How on old me. were you? Um, I was thirty four. Wow. Yeah, I was like a grown woman. Mm. I was in uh, two thousand nine. So, oh, so I was in Las Vegas, and oh. this individual picked me out somehow. I guess I looked. Sweet. You know, like an easy walking on the or street, or where you were. No, I was I was at a hotel, and he was a tattoo artist, and we were talking about stuff. And he's a sociopath, so um, yeah, he showed up at my house a week later, and um, everything was eh, okay, and then it wasn't, and then I was stuck. And you know, my parents tried to save me, my friends tried to save me, but I just I couldn't. You know, when you're stuck in that situation, Did they knew where you were. No. They didn't. No, I would talk to them on the phone, but he was such a violent individual, and he had threatened the lives of my friends and family, um, mostly my dad. You say he's violent. He he, very he violent. hurt you. Yeah, he was very violent. He was. Uh, he had just got out of prison for ten and a half years for um, armed robbery on the Las Vegas Strip. But uh, so what? Flash forward when when I was able to escape this guy. Um, he burned all my belongings. Like he torched our entire place, burnt my shoes, burnt my clothes. I mean, held me at like gunpoint in our house for four hours. And so when I was able to get out, um, the only thing I had left was his tattoo equipment. Mm. And so when I, he went to prison and that's literally all I had. And I was like, how the hell am I going to make money? I can't go back to it. I didn't have anything at that point. Yeah. You know, I had nobody to call. I mean, my parents were barely talking to me, you know? Sure. So I was like, well, guess what? I'm going to tattoo. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, how about that for symbolism, too? Right? The only thing left is a tattooing I'm gonna, kit. I'm going to take and, your stuff. And yeah. the guy that, and your, that held your you hostage. And your personal willpower. Violently yep. held you hostage. Yeah. It, it was also a tattoo artist. Yeah. And somehow, it, it's almost. A terrible one, by the way. Yeah. Oh, really? He Sorry. probably might have done mine. Uh, you know what? I, it's it's uh, <laughs> the clock moves so fast. I have yeah. a couple more questions for okay, you, yeah. but we do have to take a break here. Okay. And uh, and so I just want to 
yeah. resolve the story because we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. And, and how you were able to just okay. get your life together after such a traumatic situation. Okay. Yeah. So a couple more questions with Skinderella okay. yeah. on the program in just a moment here on Phil Hewlett and Friends. <laughs> Cinderella is here in, in the studio with us. Manny the Movie Guy is coming up in about 15 minutes. And uh, so we're getting into your story a little more. And we'll talk, we're will we talking about your book as well and what led you to the book. Uh, it's a children's book. And, and just a strange, a, a tattoo artist, a bad tattoo artist, you say, <laughs> held you hostage for a year and a half, violently holding you hostage. And somehow you escaped. Um, and then once you got out of there, then all of a sudden the artwork became your sanctuary. Yeah. Explain how that works now. Is it a, a therapeutic, like a post-traumatic stress uh, for, therapy yeah, thing? For me, it has been. Um, I started therapy shortly after I realized I had PTSD. I was having some issues, obviously, so I went to the, the hospital and was diagnosed, and they sent me to therapy, and the therapist, you know, said, what do you like to do? I, well, I, I draw a lot, you know, so she had me do a few drawings, and it, it really helped. I would draw, you know, things that were in my nightmares or things that made me happy. And the whole point of the the drawing is it's really good to reset your neurotransmitters. So when you have PTSD, they're fire, your fight or flight's firing constantly. Right. And so when you just distract yourself for a minute, like let's say to just search for red in the room, it resets your your brain, you know, not to get all geeky. But um, so that's why I draw a lot. And it's really helped me. I've been doing this, you know, therapy for like five years and again the examples of the art are at skinderellaart.com and and it's just a, an amazing talent that you have and at some point you decided i'm gonna do tattoos yeah well that is when i realized i had no other means to make money i didn't have shoes or i mean imagine i i showed up at my house and there was a huge fire in the back and there were like five fire engines and the fire chief came out and there were 17 cop cars oh so when you was es- when you escaped yeah. he went and torched your house well yeah he was gone so i i went back yeah. to get my things and mm-hmm. that's there my things were in a plume of smoke in the backyard oh, no yeah. No. Now, how long is this guy uh, in the big house? He is out. He's oh. out? He's out. That's scary. Do you have a restraining order? No, he's in New York. So That's I'm a... letting sleeping dogs lie with uh-huh. him. There's no need to, I don't ever want to see him. But you're out You're out there. Court. You're in public. You're, you're yeah. a public person. I, I take precautions. I know my surroundings. I, I kind of stay in places I'm familiar with, and I... Um, I'm always nervous. But he haunts you. But, he, yeah, he haunts me all the time. I mean, I have nightmares and all that. But but uh, today I'm really healthy and I'm mindful that mm-hmm. I'm strong enough to yes. uh, handle the situation. And I'm you not ha- scared and, anymore. And you have a little baby girl. Yeah, and I have a baby girl. And that's what makes me strong. I mean, I would fight a dinosaur if they were, you know, like a T-Rex. I yeah. would kick its, <clears throat> you know, ass, uh-huh. if you can say that. But uh, yeah, so it, she's made me really strong. Like I can, I'm not scared of him anymore. I'm nervous, but he doesn't have me under his thumb like he used to. And has, has she asked? Has your daughter asked you the question? Where do tattoos come from? Yeah, she. Well, she asked like, what are these pictures? Yeah. And why do you have pictures she on your body yeah. and I don't? Yeah, she hasn't asked that part yet that she doesn't. Uh, I do you have an answer for that? Half. But the pictures, yeah, I well, that's what made me write this book. I'm like, somebody needs to do like a Dr. Seuss, like a funny rhyme time, something that you could explain it quick. Because so many parents have tattoos, and yeah, their kids are going to say, lot. okay, why, why does mommy or why does daddy yeah. look different than me? And it's not just an ethnic thing or whatever, right. or just yeah. the, the, like they're bigger, they're older, they're, yeah. they're hairier, but they've got, they've <laughs> got know, this. they're colored in. Yeah, they've yeah. got this. <laughs> They've got this stuff on their skin. What is that? It's yeah. Cartoon Land, and yeah. I'm not in Cartoon Land. Right? <laughs> well, she is. She lives in Cartoon Land at my house. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, uh, th- 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 here's here's another question. Now, how mm-hmm. old is your daughter? She's two and eight months. A- at what age? Uh, well, I don't know. Are you pre- <laughs> are you prepared for the question, uh, Mommy, can I get a tattoo? Well, I don't know. You know, I think when they see you grow up with them, it they think that they should get them, like, at five. Because I've heard other kids, but well, no, but obviously when are you not. Cool? When are you cool when with am I, I, I don't know. You know, I think... Well, at I mean, 18, you don't really have a choice, right? Obviously, at 18, anymore. I don't have a choice. And I just hope that I get, do a good enough job raising her so that she makes a good decision when it comes to it and she doesn't just tattoo her face. And, and, and Grandpa's not you know? into it. 
Well, no, my dad's not too hip on tattoos. Yeah, forty-five years with the L.A. DA's yeah. office. Yeah, so oh, he's oh, oh, no. Tattoo, tattoos yeah. to him uh, yeah. indicate criminal. He's, yeah, he thought I joined a gang when I got my first butterfly tattoo. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> But he loves <laughs> bloods a crypt butterfly. Right. He loves his little granddaughter, and he's probably oh, wondering. So uh, yeah, he, yeah. in the back of his mind, he's <laughs> thinking, "My crazy daughter is going to tattoo my granddaughter." He, he probably is. Yeah, I don't know. I think he knows me better now. <laughs> Who was your first client when you you your house is burned oh, down? You get this tattoo client. kit. Who's the first person that gives you money to give him a tattoo? Well, okay. The first person that paid me to get a tattoo was uh, my friend Sachelle. And that was prior to that because I was trying it before. Oh, okay. You were practicing. And, uh, yeah. And then I got beat up and that money stolen from me. Same guy. But uh, the first one after, I can't even remember. Yeah. It's just it's I can't remember. been long enough that, ago now and you've done enough tattoos. Yeah. You know what? That that short window of that five months where I was free, I really it's a blur because it was so chaotic and so nerve wracking that. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that is that is something. But you also sell your art. Yes. I mean, not tattoo, but uh, yeah. you know, can- canvas or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. Everywhere, everywhere I can. I'm wearing a watch with a cool. Uh, I designed this watch. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there's this cool uh, modify watches, and you can make all your own. So I have a whole uh, line of watches with them. And is there what, like a gallery, or do just people buy yeah. things online? Yeah, both. Both. Yeah. Yeah, they can. You can buy stuff through my website, and then I have other websites that I'm on. There's like uh, sites where artists can sign up, and do, there's like New Van Gogh and. Do you um, still buy? Zazzle. Do you still sell that? Uh, what, what was it? Uh, hinky stick? What was they, it? Oh, the yippy stick. <laughs> oh no. yeah, yippy stick. Do you no, know? That is no. a good idea, by I, I the way. No, it was. You know, Slim I think it was dogs. just a little ahead of its time. Well, you did. You should have sold the the idea to Purina or somebody like well, that. Well, I I was in the works with Del Monte, and what happened was there was a big uh, recall. From oh. all this stuff that was being made in China. So yeah. somebody screwed up the plant in China and poisoned oh, yeah. a bunch of U.S. dogs, yeah. right? right? So my plant that I used was in the U.S. And so everybody jumped from China to the U.S. And mm-hmm. my plant literally called and said, we can't run your product anymore. Because uh, you're... Because they don't the, 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 the demand the for demand them was, was so high, high for yeah. the other companies. So I was out of business overnight. Folks with the cash came in yeah. and pushed you to the back of the line. Well, that's, yeah. a, that's a shame. I know. Because I know. because your product was American made and it, didn't it, was, have, it, was, it wasn't lead flavored. It wasn't. It was good. We used to eat them at the dog shows. <laughs> oh, really? People would say, oh, if it's See? so good, you eat it. Okay. <laughs> uh, my grandparents used to feed their dogs wet dog food, and I would look at it and go, God, for some reason when I was a kid, I was like, that looks tasty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, you are such a fascinating person. I, I'm surprised that you're not out there more. Uh, are, is this a process for you now? Yes. Yeah. Well, it it's, uh, you know, like I said, with the PTSD, I really have been a homebody for a long, long time. I, I had agoraphobia for a while. Are, are you so going to write a book about your experience? Yes. Yeah, I'm going That'll to. That'll be cathartic, too, yeah. won't it? Mommy, where does PTSD come from? No, Maybe. not a yeah. children's book about being <laughs> abducted. and. and... Well, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be very exciting. <laughs> Oh, yeah, boy. no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more stuff. I mean, I don't know who knows where because there's so many the details that I you. just don't feel like I could ask you about it just right? yet because it's still so fresh. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I every time you said something about your abduction, I had five questions, but I right. thought, yeah. no, I'm not going to ask those right now. Yeah, although I, I'd feel like I'm not doing my job, but just the same. No, you're doing fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like you. My won't put a tattoo too, on yeah. somebody's. It's, to, it's yeah. always best to keep it general. You won't tattoo somebody's <laughs> face. I won't ask you about intimate details about your. Abduction. Because okay, all right, fine. What about someone's throat? Fair Would you tattoo someone's throat? Oh my gosh! I, you no, know, I I wouldn't just because it's kind of nerve wracking. Yeah, seems like a dangerous location. Yeah, to be what if I like accidentally get him a tracheotomy or something? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like get a little shaky or sneeze and poof right through that. Now, do people so, ask uh, blow their uh, larynx uh, out. along with the tattoos? Do they ask about hardware? Do you do you do the hardware? Stuff, oh yeah, like uh, like iron jewelry, any balls jewelry and stuff under oh. the skin and all of that kind oh, of stuff. No, no. no. You don't do that. No, no earrings. No, no, no piercings. No piercings. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I. Yeah. That's Usually those two me. things go together. I just, yeah, it's not really. Yeah. While you're here, I just want to tell okay. you about something that's going on in Cuba. There's a there's oh, a get po- ready. There's a popular surgery that Cuban men are getting. What? They're getting they're getting a plastic pearl inserted in their uh, penis in their junk to to make themselves permanently ribbed for her pleasure, so to speak. <laughs> Well, you said a plastic pearl. Don't you need multiple plastic pearls? Yeah, it's just one rib. Well, they, 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 guys don't have a whole lot of cash in Cuba. <laughs> or so maybe ma- not a whole lot of penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can only fit one. 
<laughs> yeah. Now I don't know if it's if it's. How about just like angling up? Can't I don't they... know if it actually works or if it causes any serious complications or anything yeah. like that. But I'm uh, pretty no. sure it's going to have some complications. But how long is it going to be before somebody? I mean, you have the happy face on the guy's butt cheek. I mean, somebody's going to ask for something a little yeah. more intimate eventually. Do you? No. Has that happened? Has, have you had to turn that down? They said okay. I I did turn down a, a penis tattoo once. You did. What yeah. did he want? Climb aboard. That's oh my, my guess. Oh my god! You know what he wanted? The truth. Oh, he wanted that written on his the junk? truth. Yeah, Good so he Lord. could tell people you can't handle the truth. Oh my god. <laughs> What is wrong with people? Right, says no. Go get it from somebody I else. You know, I, I, I'm thinking if I ever got a tattoo and I don't have any, it would be it would be something humorous. Like, okay, I, I'd like <laughs> right? I'd like baseballs. Yeah. Uh-huh. On your okay. <laughs> baseballs. <laughs> yeah. You would do something jokey, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's the, here's the bat. Here's still the doesn't baseballs. it yeah. still doesn't overtake having the truth written on your junk so you can <laughs> tell people you can't <laughs> handle the truth. <laughs> Go to the store at philhewlettandfriends.com. Look for the book. It's right there in the number one position. Mommy, where do tattoos come from? It's good for your kids if you've got the ink. Uh, You can explain it to them. And and also go to skinderellaart.com and check it out. What a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for spending all this extra time with us. Yeah. Hey, another big movie weekend. At least I think it is. We'll find out for sure when Manny the Movie Guy joins us live next right here on Phil Hewlett and Friends.